Hello friends and welcome to uh, the next installment in this series, an introduction to R0 for Studio Max. And today what we're going to explore is the use of AOVs, also known as render passes. Now if you are in a rush, you just want to understand how AOVs work, open the render setup, go to the AOV tab and click this, this option here called AOV Manager. Once you open this window, you go to the Add AOV file, click on EXR Wizards, Click on this option here, all in one, so you can have the AOV separate. And then it's up to you, the kind of workflow that you're using. If you're working with Nuke, Fusion, you may want to have a direct indirect. If you're working with Photoshop, you probably be better just use using these ones. And then once you're happy, just click Done. If there is something that you don't need, for example, if you don't need volume, you can just come, come here and just delete it. And then probably you'll have something here which you can delete. And then you can go to tokens and you can select this option here called render folder. There is more options if you want to explore. The option render folder, what it's going to do, it's going to pick where you're saving your file, your render file, and automatically save the AOVs inside. So that's the quick way for AOVs. And now let me show you a little bit more things you'll find useful when working with AOVs. So if I delete this, um, and I'll go to the AOVs. One of the things you may want to do is creating light groups, right? Like, like I have here. So I'm just going to delete all of them. Now, at the moment, Arnold doesn't have a light mix, as you can find, for example, in Corona or V-Ray. Uh, but you can work in a similar way. Uh, and actually, uh, as, a, as a personally, what I do, even when I'm working with Corona or working with V-Ray, I like to bring those uh, AOVs or render passes with lights and do my light mix inside Photoshop, for example. It's something I prefer because I, I feel I have more control. I don't like to get stuck to a specific light mix because I may want to explore um, different options. And sometimes you don't have the time to play with it. So it's just like a safe way to go back to Photoshop and, and do what I feel I would like to for, for that image. Um, the same principle applies and you can you work in the same way with Arnold. So one of the first things you can do is just create a couple of um, light groups. So for example, I'm going to create one for my sky dome. I'm going to create another one for the spotlights that I have. And I'm going to create another one for a light I have on the sides. Now you can create these light groups by click on the add. And then all you have to do is just drag and drop them to the correct position. You can do it from here or you can do it from this one here. So. If I click on my spot one, you see automatically it's removed from the default. Spot two, it's removed and uh, side, it's come here. Now, because I'm using an HR map and I have a, a window here, which you, you cannot see, I'm using a, a portal light just to help to clean the, the scene inside a little bit faster. So what I can do is just drag and drop this to sky. It doesn't, doesn't matter, honestly. Once this is done, you can go again to the AOV manager and then you can click again on the option, add AOV file and you can uh, select the option in the EXR wizard. Again, it's up to you. Honestly, you want to have everything separate into different uh, files and then you want to have uh, direct on indirect, depending again on the workflow. Uh, then you click on this option here called use light groups, right? I don't want the default one. Uh, I just want one for the sky, for the spotlights, for the sides. Just to keep it simple, I'm just going to make everything into one file, just to show you. So as you can see, I have one file for the sky, for the spotlights, and for the sides, right? If I double click here, I can call this light mix. Um, and then you can just keep adding more AOVs. So for example, I want another AOV, which is going to be an EXR, and I'm going to call it data, right? Uh, by the way, you can come here and you can select a different file format. Uh, obviously, unless you're doing a preview, something quick, you should be using EXRs. Um, unless you want to do like a preview, you can use a JPEG. Uh, but EXRs, that's the way to, to work properly. Then you can, you can come to the AOV list, for example, and select the data option. And then, for example, the N stands for normal map. Uh, P uh, can it be used in Nuke or Infusion uh, for position. Um, you can work with the Z for Z depth, uh, and then maybe this is what I need, right? Now another thing, 
you can see here that I have I have custom AOV. So you can create custom AOVs by coming here and just giving it a name. So in this situation here, what I what I did, uh, I create one called AOV and CUV. So for example, I can just create like AOV uh, option two, for example, and just add to the list, right? And then it becomes available. Now, um, if you want to create something like the ambit occlusion, or if you want to create uh, AOV for coverture, you can do it. And this is like the way you do it. Um, one way you can create AOVs is just drag and drop and automatically creates an AOV for you. So on this one here, I can call it AOV and CUV. And I'll just drag and drop the, the next one for the curvature, right? This is just the first step, right? Okay. Now to make, to have access to the ambient occlusion and the curvature, what you need to do is you need to go to the material editor, right? And as you can see, I already have here these two AOVs are set up. I'm just going to exemplify how it works. So go to your material map browser and search for emit occlusion. You can drag and drop this option. Obviously, you'll have to come here and just tweak the settings to get. Uh, depends what you need. If you need like a finer detail, it's up to you what you need to what you want to do. Uh, I have one for the emit occlusion, and then I just type AOV, and I'm going to select this option here called AOV Right RGB, right? So I click and connect to the AOV input. I'm going to give this a proper name, like I'd like to do AOV out. And remember that we created this AOV called AO and we drag it. So the name of that AOV is that way you need to put it here. So I'm going to call AO, okay? And then you just drag and drop, as you can see, I already have one here on the material section. The same principle applies if you want to create like a curvature map. Um, you can do the same thing. Curvature, just copy this one, connect it, just give it a proper name again. Out, and then change the name of the AOV. So CUV, the same thing that we have here. And then you can just drag and drop. And and this is this is what I'm showing you is just like at the tip of the iceberg what you can do in terms of AOVs, right? So now this is going to save a file with the ambient occlusion with the curvature map, um, and allows you to create like a lot of masks if you want to. Another thing you may find useful, speaking in masks, is this option here called Cryptomat. Okay, so Cryptomat again, go to add AOV EXR. You can give it a, like a proper name, Crypto. You can select all of them in one go, just drag and drop. And this is what you're going to do is going to automatically creating for you uh, uh, masks for the assets that you have on your scene, masks for the objects you have on your scene, and masks for you, the materials you have on your scene. Right? And this works even if you're working with depth of field, with motion blur, you'll be able to select the, the, the mask that you want. Now, this is, this is the workflow, but there is one more thing that you need to do. If you go again to the render setup, to the AOV tab, I'm just going to, let's pretend this is, wasn't here. You need to select in one of these options and you need to search for Cryptomat, okay? Now in my case here, I already have uh, uh, two Cryptomat files. You probably don't have any, so just select the first option, um, but you need to add that Cryptomat file to this one. Um, that's the only way this this options here is going to be um, going to be saved. Otherwise, once you finish your render, uh, everything will be black. There's nothing, no information there. Okay. Now, once you press render, this is going to save um, four AOVs, right? So it's going to save one as light mix with these three layers. It's going to save one called data again with the normal position and Z depth. It's going to save one with the ambient occlusion curvature, and it's going to save another one with crypto for asset objects and materials. And if we go to my folder, what I'm saving is, this is where you're going to get something like this, right? My ambient occlusion, my AOVs, everything in one file, and the same thing with the light mix. Now, if you're working with Photoshop, how do you, can you have access to the AOVs inside this folder? Well, for that, something I would highly recommend is for you to install this free plugin called EXR.io. And this is going to extend um, the, the EXR options that you have inside Photoshop and will allow you not only to open the 
uh, the EXR with multiple channels inside, but it's going to allow you to work with the CryptoMath files because uh, Photoshop doesn't support CryptoMath, and this is the only way, as far as I know, to have those files inside. It's a free plugin. Um, there is a, a couple of updates every year, and is a, is a nice way to have that files inside Photoshop. So, okay, now moving to Photoshop, I uh, just want very briefly to show you that when you press render and you're using the AUVs that we set up, you're going to have something like this. So, for example, for the light mix, uh, I did create three AOVs, but I'm just getting one file, one EXR file. But if you drag and drop this into Photoshop, after installing the plugin, you'll get this window with a couple of settings. The default settings are fine, just do what you, you need. Obviously, you can check the help documentation, trying to understand what every single thing does. If I click open, what this plugin is going to do, it's going to read that single file and it's going to separate the layers inside into Photoshop layers. So now I have a layer for the, the spotlight, I have another one for the sky, and I have another one for uh, the side light. So this is one way you can work with uh, files that contains AOVs inside. I'm not a big fan of working this way, uh, in particular because I tend to use more Fusion or Nuke to do my post-production and grading. Um, so what I like to do, I just have every single AOV as a single file. How can you do that? Um, well, perhaps the easiest way is for me, if I just remove all AOVs, is for me to share with you a preset that I created. Now you can load and you can save presets. So if there's something particular that you want, you can just save it. Uh, but I'll share with you this preset that I created in particular. So you can use it if you're working with Nuke, uh, with Fusion, for example. Again, it's it, it contains all the things that you need to rebuild your beauty pass. But obviously, if you don't need, for example, like I said before, the volume direct, just remove it. Uh, if you don't have any background, remove it. Don't have emission, remove it. Motion vector, if you're not doing uh, motion blur, just remove it. So clean uh, the things that you don't need. Um, and then another thing you're probably going to notice is this uh, AOV called Variance Denoise. Now this AOV, it's used so that I can do uh, denoising for my AOVs. I guess that's a topic for another video that I'll create and explain how you can denoise AOVs. Um, and that's it. That's how you work with AOVs. It's, uh, it's a very powerful tool, allows you to get the information that you need then to go to Photoshop, uh, Fusion, Nuke, whatever you're using and do the color correction and grading that you need. Um, I hope you find this useful. Please let me know if you have any questions. And again, thank you so much for watching.